aren't uprisings all over the country, and maybe there will be. People need to start taking to the streets. This is a dictator's enemies of the state. Show me where it says that protests are supposed to be polite and peaceful. Hey, hey, welcome everybody to the Rebel Alliance podcast. My name is Aaron Bowman. I am your host as always. And today we are going to be discussing uh, in episode 56, preparedness on a budget, affordable ways to get ready for you and your PMA. So we're going to talk about a different, couple different things when it comes to preparedness on a budget for either yourself, whether you're an uh, individual, a family, um, a community and a community with an association. So that being said, um, we're going to take care of some housekeeping here in a second, but let me get this stuff, get up here, make sure we're up and running everywhere. It is Saturday morning. It's 10 30 Eastern standard time. And you might be asking yourself, why is there an episode on the weekends? Usually it's Monday through Friday. Well, if you haven't been paying attention, this weekend has been a, um, has been one heck of a show, say so to speak, uh, between my work schedule and appointments and anything that could go wrong, going wrong. It, you know, yesterday I think I slept for just again another few hours, and I just didn't have it in me. A uh, brother-in-law came in from out of town, so wanted to see them last night and the family. So it just really, it just I tried, but I figured, you know what? I'm not working this weekend. I've got some things around the homestead to do. And it's kind of nice out, so I got to make a run to the transfer station today. Not that you guys care about this stuff, but this is why I'm doing an episode today. And probably tomorrow in the afternoon, uh, we'll have another one. So that being said, let's take care of some of the housekeeping and get that out of the way. For those of you who are interested in associations or looking for more information, you can head over to eastcoastpma.com. The website is back up. There was some issue with some code on it yesterday that got straightened out. So that was another reason of things I was handling in the back end. But over there, you'll find past episodes. You'll find DIY templates. There's other things in the shop that you can look for that might help you with your association or getting it set up. You can also schedule a time on there to either have a 30 or 60 minute consultation with me to really dive into what your needs are when it comes to associations or if you already have an association set up review reviewing of documents and that sort of thing so feel free to head over there now next week our monthly call with the ladies over at the pma manifesto is happening that's uh seven to eight eastern standard time i believe or eight to nine eastern standard time but if you go over to the PMA Manifesto, you can also find the DIY templates over there. You can sign up for the newsletter. You can also join the PMA Manifesto Facebook group. So if you're in the East Coast PMA Facebook group or the Telegram group, get over to the PMA Manifesto. We have a lot of people uh, asking to come in there, and there's a lot of good information on there. Also, you can meet to Angela's and Erica, and then we do a free call every month uh, to be able to discuss, uh, you know, your questions about the association and stuff like that. So make sure you get on that notification. And if you're in the Facebook group, you'll get notified there. Also, we use meeting so you can get on there. You can put on your camera. You can ask us questions regarding your association. You get a response of all four of us. So that being said, the last thing that I want to talk about as always is, uh, if you do go over to the East coast PMA website, there's some links on there that you can use to help support this broadcast and then if you are looking to take back your computer sovereignty like we're all trying to live a more sovereign less intrusive government lifestyle where we're just allowed to be free and pretty much do what we want as long as we're not causing any harm unfortunately we're tracked everywhere online so if you go over to start nine you can pick up one of their servers over there that allows you to take back your computer sovereignty you can run your own search engine you can run your own version of chat gpt with language models you can run your own paypal so to speak using btc pay you can set up your own lightning node and the best part is it's as easy as clicking a button like installing an app on your phone and what i really like is the fact that you can actually have end-to-end -end encrypted text messages that either burn upon reading or not, and then it's only going through your server, so it's not being shared everywhere. And I know some of you have already used this code. I appreciate that, thank you very much. But if you go over there and you purchase one, get 9% off by using Rebel Alliance, uh, all one word, in checkout, and you'll get 9% off your purchase, which is huge. So, all right, that being said, I'm turning the comments on here. I don't expect a lot of people to be watching the live show today, to be quite honest with you, because it is Saturday morning at 
30 in the morning Eastern Standard. And I've got people that watch from all over. Uh, so uh, I'm not really expecting there to be a lot of people on this one. But a couple of things I want to bring your attention to. Now, somebody shared this website with me a little while ago. And it's the, uh, let me pull it up here. It's the Ingersoll, Ingersoll Lockwood. And he was a, um, a writer. And this is uh, an interesting site. If you go over to it, it's just IngersollLockwood.com. And they talk about Space Force and some other things and stuff like that. But as you scroll down, there's this right here where my mouse is. It's either a, I think this is a watch this time. I'm not zooming in on it, but sometimes it's a rabbit, little right, right little white rabbit. Sometimes it's a mouse. I think that's a watch. Uh, but when you click on it, it brings you somewhere different. And this just happens to bring you to uh, Governor Greg Abbott, uh, a memo he put out or, um, on January 24th. So for a while, it was bringing people to the movie. Um, uh, what was that movie? Uh, Sound of Freedom. Then there was a real cryptic image last week that it was bringing you to, and I'll post that on the uh, on the um, what do you call it? on the uh, East Coast PMA. Man, brains uh, shot already today. It's not good. Uh, and where you can see this real cryptic message of uh, it's a white and black swan. It looks like there's some type of virus. It's got a person in a bio suit. It's got a rabbit holding a sword on top of a an hourglass that's the time's running out. Very interesting, some of the stuff up there. But what I wanted to tackle real quick before we get into this preparedness, and the reason why I'm talking about this preparedness is uh, some of the movies that have been coming out lately, Leave the World Behind. We've got that revolution uh, movie coming out where Texas separates and California, I think, and then the U.S. uses its military against its own people coming out, I think, in April. And there's all this uh, pre-programming going on. And now we see that there is an issue, if you haven't been paying attention, at the uh, Texas border where the Texas has put up razor wire and barriers. And unfortunately, the Biden administration keeps suing and fighting. And the Supreme Court on a 5-4 ruling said that, you know, they have to take this barbed wire down, which is absolutely ridiculous. So if we go look at some of the, the news here, we have Texas governor says prepare for conflict with U.S. government over the border. There's a thing here and a, a little um, uh, brief on what's going on when it comes to barriers. And it says we are prepared in the event that the unlikely event does occur just to make sure that we are able to continue exactly what we've been doing over the past month and that is building these barriers, Abbott said in an interview with uh, Tucker Carlson. And basically what they're trying to do is the federal government and the Border Patrol are just letting all these people come through. Like we've talked about before, it you know would be a different story if they were actually coming in through, I don't know what just opened up over there, uh, if uh, they actually were women and children that weren't being trafficked or uh, kids being sexually trafficked, of course, across the border to God only knows where all these kids have gone missing. People are just handing them off. They're getting put on these buses. Now these illegal immigrants are allowed to, uh, illegal aliens are allowed to fly without an ID. There's all this stuff going on. And it would be different if a majority of the people coming across wasn't uh, middle-aged males that are from Hamas, that are uh, from the uh, from China, all these different possible cells being set up within the U.S. And it really comes down to a security issue. It has nothing to do other than that. And so we see all this stuff going on. And now Texas is calling into uh, pro-invasion Scottish ru SCOTUS ruling that basically, like I said, there was a 5-4 um, ruling on Monday and the courts basically said that uh, you know, Texas can't put up their borders, which is ridiculous. Every state should be able to protect itself. And, you know, the government should be there to help protect our borders and help protect our rights. And it's just not doing that. And uh, there is um, another, I got this from the constitutional party. I got their email the other day and there's a whole thing here uh, about the border invasion. And it, it's really good. I'll, I forgot to put this in the show notes, but I'll put it in uh, afterwards. And it talks about the decision this week, and then it goes into really some of the um, the numbers of people that have come through. And um, there was 169 individuals on the terror watch list. 1.7 million known gotaways have evaded apprehension since uh, fiscal year of 2021. There have uh, been 35,433 aliens arrested with criminal convictions and outstanding warrants. 
178 members of MS-13. And if you don't know who they are, you should probably do a quick search because they are some bad dudes. And it shows you how much that it's $4,466 per illegal immigrant. And it goes into more and more. So this is a very interesting read if you really want to see what's going on because it really has to do with protecting our borders as a nation. And, you know, you know, you had uh, the, the clown in the People's White House saying, you know, if I win, surge the borders. And that's exactly what's been happening. And now you're tying the hands of this, one of the bordering states saying, no, you can't protect your own people within your state, which is absolutely insane. And this is why we're talking about preparedness today and your associations and getting them up and running and really starting to prepare with each other and building these communities because we're going to need each other a lot sooner than later. And then with what I found is very interesting is this here is that the Oklahoma governor comes this close to asking troops to rebel against Biden. And it's basically talking about civil warish type things. It's an, you know, um, he's sending troops. It looks like to the Texas border. There's 26. Uh, let me see if I have a picture of that map. This has been floating around. If you take a look at this, these are the 26 states. And of course, good old Connecticut hasn't jumped on there. You know, the constitution state and all uh, hasn't backed uh, Governor Abbott, you know, our uh, our uh, mighty governor here and King Lamont, as everybody calls him, Ned, has uh, not stepped up to the plate and said, hey, we're going to back Texas because we're in between Boston and Massachusetts. Uh, Boston and Massachusetts. We're in between New York and Massachusetts or New York City and Boston. We are a through state. And so don't think for a minute here in Connecticut that we're not going to start getting dumped with illegal immigrants and putting them up in places and that sort of thing. So it would be a smart move for our Democratic elected governor, who is a Democrat there, to back Texas along with these other 26 states so far. And um, it's unfortunate that we have to see this stuff. Um, those of you who are watching, feel Feel free to leave a comment, questions, concerns, or anything like that. And now that we've gone kind of over those news topics and all this nonsense at the border, which has just gotten completely out of control, I will um, – oh, let me see here. Stop the screen share. All right. I will get into our topic today, preparedness on a budget. Now, one of the things that I have conversations with people um, once in a while is preparedness. What do you do? What kind of gear do you have? What did you buy? This and that. And – I started off really basic and I'm still nowhere near where I want to be. And I think it's a constant build. It's a constant reevaluation. You've got to constantly be looking at your scenarios. And I almost did one. So on this top, before I selected this topic, I was looking at subject matter jurisdiction. And then I was looking at preparedness with um, elderly or children or uh, vulnerable uh, class of people where, you know, it gets really different if you have a, an elderly parent or a grandparent with you, or you have a multi-generation, multi-generational household where you need to have medications and stuff like that. But I decided let's just start real easy. Let's, let's start with a budget because, you know, inflation's going through the roof. Your dollar definitely doesn't go as far as it used to. And we need to figure out a way to make this preparedness happen. So, um, the biggest thing is that wherever you are geographically located, you need to figure out what emergencies or disasters or unexpected situations could happen in your area. Now, if we still see Texas going this way, I think we're eventually going to see some kinetic conflict. It's not going to be uh, just putting up borders and barriers and stuff like that because um, this government is, you know, the, the, the train is off the track. I mean, this... You know, I used to think that having the Supreme Court, you know, was kind of like the um, the judicial system is kind of like the last line of defense. And now that seems to be, you know, corrupted and everything else because this ruling should have never happened this way. Personally, every state should be sovereign into itself and to be able to protect itself. And the um, the Supreme Court ruling that way, 5-4, was just kind of ridiculous. So anyways, um, this isn't necessarily about like the, the collapse of the U.S., even though we are burning, it's all burning down around us. Uh, kind of like the fall of Rome, I guess, is the best way to look at it. But you want to make sure that it's um, everybody is preparing. It's not really a luxury anymore the way things are going. You need to start preparing. So for me, one of the go-to places I need, I go to, there's two spots I go to for budget-friendly stuff. And I don't know if you have in your area, but you might have something that's similar to it. And that is either Harbor Freight. You can get some decent stuff there for preparedness, for security purposes, cameras, stuff like that. If you want that stuff, there's tarps, there's all different kinds of uh, 
canisters that you can get there, basic tools to have on hand. And I think everybody should have some basic tools and then ways of storing stuff or setting up caches if you have to bug out. But most of us are going to stay home. Let's be honest. We're not going to be running off anywhere. Um, so, and again, this has to do with really unexpected situations. Like one of the episodes the other day when I was at the doctor's office, they lost their internet in the building and everything came to a grinding halt because they had no backup systems. They didn't know what to do with just pen and paper. They couldn't take x-rays without a computer for teeth. So, you know, there's those things where you want to try to think long-term and not just zombie apocalypse stuff here. Let's think about if the power goes out. If something like leave the world behind happens with the grid being attacked, how are you going to, you know, keep your family and your community safe? Now, this also goes for if you are part of an association or PMA, or if you are thinking of putting one together, you want to be able to provide stuff to your members and say, hey, this is what I'm doing, or hey, let's have a class on preparedness. What are some things we can do? Do some hands-on activities at that. So um, it's important to have that preparedness and being uh, ready for any uh, unexpected uh, emergencies and stuff like that. So budget constraints. Now, I know that, you know, uh, number two on the list is budget constraints. You know, some people might be at poverty level. Some people might be below. Some people might be whatever the middle class used to be. I don't even think it exists anymore. Or some people might be really well off. Regardless, you know, we have to have budgets and we have to understand what we can buy. So, well, maybe it's this month we buy a camping stove and we put that away and then we save up for a month or two and then we buy maybe a freeze dryer or three months and buy a freeze dryer and start dehydrating our own food. Or maybe we go in it with another family or a couple people within your association. We say, hey, listen, let's pool our money together and let's buy this dehydrator and start dehydrating. So you shouldn't let any type of financial limitations deter you from prepping or being prepared. It's as simple, like I said before, as just storing water. You've got a tap, the water comes out of it as long as it's not contaminated is good. It might get a little stale sitting in a bottle, so you wanna rotate that out. But if you don't drink soda, you don't drink juice, um, I would stay away from milk containers are not really that strong. But you want something that's a little bit stronger, you can go to Harper Freight and you can buy water now, water um, bottles. They are blue. They are five gallons. I think they're five gallons. I have one in the garage. You can fill it up. I bring that one to the local spring down the road and fill it up with spring water. So you can do that type of stuff, store it, and then rotate through it. Um, you know, I had one of my my old neighbors, he had a bunch of glass carboys. And in our town, the, you know, we were both on wells, but we get a lot of wash off because we were so close to the road at that point. All that salt and garbage was getting into the water system. So our sulfur was really high. So we would go out to a spring um, uh, in the town called... Uh, and Wyndham and uh, I can't uh, Chasey Park. I think it's what it's called. Anyways, there's a spring there. So he would fill, I'd fill up my plastic bottles, but he had old school glass carboys that you could use for brewing beer or wine. And he was filling those up and using those for drinking water. And again, glass, you got to be a little bit more careful, uh, you know, break them or anything. But again, it's what he had on hand. So he started doing it. So don't ever let you know, uh, financial limitations feel you can't prepare. And that's even, let's say you're on some type of, you know, assistance from the state and you have your EBT card or whatever it is, you can use that to buy food. Well, maybe you buy some extra pasta and put it away, even if it's just one, or maybe it's an extra can of sauce, you know, something every time you go buy one extra of something and don't, you know, uh, spend the money or piss the money away on something else. You know, uh, my biggest thing is, you know, I'm a gadget guy. I love gadgets. So uh, if I see a gadget that I want, I try my hardest to say, okay, let me give it a, let me give it three days. And if I still am like, yeah, I need this in like, so I wanted to buy this laser engraver cutter thing. I wanted to start laser engraving stuff. Kind of like um, one of our members, uh, it's things kind of dirty, but you can see it's a, a Liberty House ministry. It's got our our logo on it. And so they did that and they did, uh, you know, they gave me this one here, which was on a piece of leather for like a leather patch, which I thought was cool. So I was like, I want that. I need to get it. And then I was like, okay, they're expensive. Let me wait. Let me wait because, you know, that'd be a great side hustle business, but let me wait. And now I don't even really want it anymore. I waited like four weeks. I waited a month and I was like, you know what? I've got so many other things going on. I don't need to add another pot to the fire. So just, you know, take your time when you're buying stuff. If you see that uh, shiny object, you know, kind of give yourself a minute like, yeah, maybe I really don't need that. And then number three is prioritizing needs. So you want to, you know, think of this as if you have somebody that, you know, maybe is on medication, somebody that has some type of 
um, you know, asthma, for like example, like one of my kids has asthma. So making sure you have enough inhalers on hand, you want to make sure that you're doing a gradual process and focusing on individuals in your family or within your association on what people need. So maybe you put together like little care packages for each member in your association. So there's some hygiene items in there. There's some food, ramen noodles, spam, whatever it is. Listen, we're just talking calories at this point because things are bad or there's some type of emergency or people can't get to the grocery store, uh, you know, during the, uh, COVID, pandemic, whatever you'd like to call it. As a realtor, I had some families that I was helping out that couldn't get to the store because they had, you know, elderly people at home. They were really afraid about, you know, this virus. And I was like, I don't care or whatever. It is what it is. I've got my ivermectin. We'll give it a shot. So I went to the grocery store, got them stuff, put together care packages, brought it to their door, dropped off, said, hey, here's some toilet paper. Here's some hygiene items. Here's some, you know, food. You know, here you go. And I even asked, I said, what are some of the things that you eat? Let me know and I'll get that stuff for you. I don't mind going out. I'm pretty healthy. So just make sure that you prioritize your needs for, you know, the individuals in your family. And this also coincides with if you have an association and you're getting together as a group saying, okay, what are some of the things we need? And don't go out and buy a whole, you know, 50 pound bag of beans if you've never cooked beans before. So, um, again, we've kind of already talked about this. Number four is affordable water storage. Recycled containers are my favorite. They're in abundance. You know, somebody that has kids that drinks a ton of juice, whether it's the V8 splash or orange juice or soda or pop, depending on where you are in the country, you know, use those bottles, clean them out, soap, water, maybe get a bottle brush, dry them out, fill them up with your tap water, stick them in your pantry, stick them in the garage somewhere, basement where it's kind of cool and then rotate through them because they will get stale. But again, um, you're not going to have to pay for water. Don't go out. Like people go out and, oh my gosh, there's this big event and I got to go buy, you know, a case of water. And they're like, yeah, I guess what? That case that was $4 last week because there's an emergency, it's $25 this week. So just basic little steps to get prepared is all you need. Now, number five, because we are about 21 minutes in and I got a few more of these. Um, I'm trying really not, so hard not to say, um, it's annoying. Food, number five is food preparedness. So, you can get your Patriot food. You can get your buckets of food. Cabela's or Bass Pro has buckets of storable 25-year life. You can go to your local uh, Army surplus store. If you have one in your area, probably pick up some MREs, stuff like that. But it's as simple as getting stuff that, you know, dry goods last for a while. It, and uh, I'm going to touch on this in a minute. Yeah, it's number 10. I don't want to give, I don't want to give that one away yet, but there's ways to prepare your food. There's ways to use your oven to dry food out for like dehydrating stuff like that. Like I said earlier, if you get together within your group and you say, Hey, listen, you know, instead of buying these 25 year shelf life buckets of food that are really expensive and you are going to throw it in your basement and you're not going to open it up and know how to cook it till there's an actual emergency. Well, maybe we get together and we buy a freeze dryer and we start making our own because some of those buckets are only good for like, you get like a week's worth of food and it's like 50 bucks. And it's like, that's crazy. So, um, especially you know, like us, we have a larger family. There's seven of us total. So that would be very difficult and very, not very cost effective. So if we're doing it on a budget, like I said, Aldi's is one of my other favorite places to go. I can get pasta sauce i can get pasta i can get mac and cheese i you know and i'm not talking about hey let's eat as healthy as possible i'm looking at how many calories do i need per day to sustain us to be able to get us through this and maybe it's not the cleanest eating but at least we're eating and then you know if you're like in my area where i've got a lot of woods and i've got you know small game and deer and stuff like that then maybe you utilize some of your hunting and trapping skills also but just for food preparedness, you want to start looking at non-perishable stuff in bulk, um, self uh, shelf-stable foods, and again, gradually building a pantry of essentials. And that where I've talked before about having a list, you know, write a, a food diary of what you eat. And then as you start checking off, like, hey, we had pasta three times this week and we had, you know, macaroni and cheese or we had you know, uh, sardines, we ate sardines twice this week, or like my wife loves Vienna sausages. I think they're absolutely disgusting, but maybe that's one of the things you like. And so you start buying that, uh, shelf stable food and you start packing your pantry and then just kind of rotate through your supply to keep everything fresh. Next is emergency kits. These are very important. I've showed the book before. I don't even know where it is right now, but there's like the, uh, doom and gloom podcast, I think is what it's called. They have a, um, Dr. Uh, 
Dr. Bones and Nurse G- oh, Judy. Oh, I'm screwing that up. I don't think that's her name. Uh, I haven't listened to them in a little while, but their book's really good. And I got one for my wife when she finished nursing school and one for myself because it really covers a gambit of things. But you want to have some type of resource. And having it on a PDF or on a computer or tablet, your cell phone may not be the best. You might want to have a hard copy of something because if electricity is scarce or the grid goes out and you can't access it, well, then that information knowledge is lost. So having hard copies of stuff is also important. So when it comes to DIY emergency kits, you know, don't, I hate the emergency kits you can buy on Amazon and stuff like that. There's a bunch of junk in there you don't need. You know, um, you want to look at stuff like, First aid supplies, you know, some bandages, some band-aids, some neosporum, um, uh, terry strips if you have a cut, super glue, uh, flashlights, batteries, hygiene products, stuff like that. And take advantage of discount stuff. Like there's always like in the grocery store that one like by the bathroom, that shelf of like 65% off. You can find good deals. I mean, we used to have Christmas tree shop here in Connecticut. Now we don't anymore, but they always had like discounted stuff, bins of stuff, travel stuff makes a good option because it's smaller, takes up less room. So the travel products, but you can start building these emergency kits, you know, with antiseptics in it. Maybe you go to tractor supply and not saying that I'm a doctor, this is medical advice, but they have fish penicillin there, which is basically the same stuff that you get from your doctor over the counter. Uh, maybe you pick up a bottle of that for you have some penicillin on hands for any infections or anything like that. So again, it's all small steps, starting with a few things. And like what I've done is like, Cabela's here or Bass Pro, if you have one, they had these great bags. I think they were 10 bucks. We use some for range bags. I have one that's like a medical bag. It has, you know, everything in it to IV fluid. And then I have another one that's like the lights out bag. So it's batteries, flashlights, glow sticks, and they're just, you know, stored. But then we have stuff within the house also, if you need a flashlight and stuff like that. So that brings us into number seven, home safety. Um, it's really important for home safety, especially if there starts to become riots or people start burglarizing. Now, my home is not what you would say a hundred percent. You know, we have solid doors, we have very few glass doors. Most of our windows are uh, not at ground level, so they're up a little bit easier to uh, reinforce. But you know, um, I I think if you have defense in depth with your house so maybe you have a dog security system maybe for day-to-day stuff but you know you have good perimeter lighting so you have really good floodlights if the power is still on stuff like that but you could do other things i've seen people get as you know as uh secure as buying sheets of plywood that they they screw into the wall from the inside some people put bars up i don't know if that's necessarily possible for everybody. I know my wife wouldn't like, and I don't think it would really help the resale value of the house if we ever tried to sell it having bars on the outside windows. But there's things you can do by reinforcing doors, windows, creating an emergency family plan, uh, family emergency plan, having ladders. If you're on the second floor that can go through the fire escape ladders to get off the second floor and out if somebody should be coming in through the bottom and you need to evacuate your home. These are all different things. And this also coincides with, like I just said, you know, the fire ladders with fire safety. You know, if you're burning a wood stove because the power is out and it's cold or in the fireplace and something happens or something catches fire within the house, you have a kerosene heater going and something goes south, you want to make sure that you also have, you know, um, uh, stuff to battle the fire. So fire extinguisher and a way to escape and evac out of the house, which is also important. And then having that family plan, you know, like I've said before, having a binder of things where if you get separated, you have a rally point where you're going to go to that sort of stuff. So keeping all that stuff uh, in mind, and this also corresponds with if you have an association. So let's say your associations kind of spread out. Like we have people in Bolton, Bristol, Windsor, and now we need to meet in a certain location, or maybe something's kicking off, or there's riots in one town, and they need to get to us. Okay, well, here's a path you can take. Here's some maps with some alternate routes, because maybe the GPS isn't working, and here's where you can come. One of the members can meet up to another member's house, and now, okay, now we have communications, because we have you know radios that will span that distance, that sort of thing. So this also, like I said, definitely corresponds to having an unincorporated association, or PMA, whatever you'd like to call it, because as you build your association, your groups, now, if you're not necessarily like a um, community group like we are, maybe you're doing something with holistic health, 
people can still benefit from you understanding this stuff and bringing this to them as being part of the association. Or if you have a, a free church or ministry or something like that, you want to, you know, even if you have an education uh, association, you know, maybe you provide this education to not only the children there, but also the family so they can say, hey, listen, here's what we've done. We've put together this packet of information that we think will help you get prepared should, you know, as they call it, the shit hits the fan. Um so that's where um, the community comes in and building a lot of the stuff isn't going to be able to be done on your own. That lone wolf stuff isn't really going to work. So having uh, a community with resources, that's where the association comes in. So you could encourage, you know, maybe others in the area that are like minded to join your association. You can have workshops. You can, you know, have um, uh, what was that? workshops, a good word for uh, we've had classes, stuff like that. And then going over like, hey, OK, what are you going to do if your basement floods? It's just a lot of the what if scenarios in the military. We call them tabletops. We do a bunch of tabletops. We have a picture of the base. We have the perimeter set up and then we run tabletop drills. Not only do we do them in live time, but we also do them with you know, leadership around these tabletops to make sure everybody knows what they're supposed to do. So having these community resources for your association is really good. And even if you don't have an association in your area, letting like you're knowing who your neighbors are saying, hey, man, yeah, power went out. You guys good over there? Uh, I don't think a lot of us could even name our neighbors next door or, you know, or if they need any help, you know, a tree goes across their driveway. If you're in a more rural area like I am, hey, let me come out there with my chainsaw. I'll help you move that so you can get to wherever you got to go. So you need to build that community. We're going to need that. And we're seeing that community at the large scale right now with Texas and these 28 states and these governors stepping up. Unfortunately, King Lamont, Ned here in Connecticut hasn't done that. So maybe if somebody shares this video with him or this clip, he might actually get off his ass and do something. Uh, but, um, you know, he's got more important things like, you know, uh, having his wife ahead of different companies that does COVID testing, but that's a whole nother story. So, um, with the community, we go into number nine, which is skills and knowledge. And each person within your community, your association, or within your group, or even within your family is going to have different skill sets. Like my son is learning how to weld in school. He likes welding. So I'm like, man, something breaks in the backhoe of the tractor. Guess who's welding it? I know how to do it, but I want you to improve those skills and then show me what you know. So, you know, I am not a huge forager, but I've got people within our association that are, you know, there's others that are good hunters and stuff like that. You know, I try to be a jack of all trades and a master at none. I try to know enough just to get myself in trouble, but having that stuff like, Hey, listen, I've got to, you know, learn how to backfeed a generator through my house. You know, not that's the safest way of doing it, but a lot of us do. So maybe you have somebody in your community that can hold that type of workshop and say, okay, you go out to Harbor Freight and you buy one of their basic generators because you want to keep your well pump going in your refrigerator or your chest freezer cold. And that's all you're running those three things, right? So, Hey, how about we have a class and this is the, you go to Harbor Freight. This is the generator I would recommend. Let's buy the generator. If somebody wants to, you know, buy it for the demonstration, or maybe you need a new generator or, you know, whatever the scenario is, you get that generator. Now, okay, we're going to go back to the house. Now we're going to unbox it. We're going to make sure it's running properly. We're going to check all the fluids in it. Now we're going to set it up. And this is how you shut off your main breaker and you back feed it through the system. See, there's all these things that we can do within the association and even within our own family structures. But, you know, a lot of the stuff you see online is prepper this, prepper that, uh, the gray man, I'm going to go in my bunker. That's not you know, the Doomsday Preppers was a TV show back in the, what was that, the early 2000s? And it's it's the stuff that, you know, maybe there's some good stuff there, but the majority of us on a day-to-day -day basis don't have to worry about building a bunker underneath our garage that nobody knows about, right? So it's more stuff like that. Now, this is my favorite one, number 10 out of all, out of everything. And I just got to get a little sip of water here. So... This one is one of my absolute favorites. And um, for those of you that had come on and come off the stream, I get it. It's a Saturday. Thanks for watching. Anyways, a lot of you watch the replays anyway. So as you're watching the replay, feel free to leave me a comment or reach out with any uh, things that you think I should have added to this list. I've always liked to always like to know that. And um, if you do leave a comment at East Coast PMA, I get so much spam on there. It takes me a while to figure out which ones are real and which ones aren't to actually answer them. So YouTube or Rumble or the Facebook group or Telegram is probably the best bet to comment. And let me know what you would have added to this list because we're almost done. But number 10 is my favorite hack of all times when it comes to being prepared on a budget. And that 
is thrift stores. Thrift stores, your Salvation Army, stuff like that, your local thrift stores, your pawn shops are a great way to go to get things on a budget, whether it's a dehydrator, a canner, um, a food processor, maybe an old school grinder. So you want to grind your own hamburger and stuff like that. Um, you know, bottles to store water and old, you know, the glass carboys, like I was talking about one of my neighbors, there's all kinds of things in there, you know, backpacks, extra clothing, warm weather gear, cold weather gear, camping stuff, all that stuff can be found in those thrift stores. Now, one thing I am going to say for those of you that live in Florida that watch this, I'm a little jealous. You guys have a lot of uh, pawn shops down there and a lot of places to get the stuff in Connecticut is not it's a little more sparse than uh, what you would see in Florida and some of the other states, but utilize those thrift stores. Utilize Facebook Marketplace, uh, even though it's getting a little pricey. Craigslist is still a good option. So you don't have to go out and buy a brand new pressure cooker. You can go and pick up a pressure cooker at one of these thrift stores or one of these pawn shops and, and negotiate. Don't just give them what they're asking. You know, wheel and deal. That's the whole fun of it. And get it for... Um, as, as least amount of money as possible. And then another thing you can do with this also, it's kind of just popped into my head because I'm doing it with my oldest, is you know everything's up and running right now. Your cell phone still works. If you have the Amazon or, yeah, Amazon, no, not Amazon, eBay app, you can go to a thrift store. And we were going through, we said, okay, we're going to take 35 bucks. We're going to go through with our cameras on our phone, look at stuff that kind of catches our eyes, scan it because you can scan the image of it. It'll tell you what it's selling for on eBay or Facebook, and then you can translate that to Facebook Marketplace and other areas and say, okay, I found this plate. I can get it for five bucks. It's selling for 25 bucks on eBay. You just made $20. Now that 20 bucks, you can put 10 back into buying something else and 10 into your preparedness or however you want to do it. So it's another way of you know flipping things to be able to add money to your budget for when it comes to preparedness. So just a side note, but I love thrift shops. You can get emergency stuff. You can get flashlights. You can get... Um, household items, you can get blenders, dehydrators, all that stuff, but you got to go on a regular basis. So make it maybe like a family trip or, Hey, the association, uh, it's Saturday. Hey, next Saturday, you know, 10 of us are going to get together from whatever your association name is. And we're going to go hit up some local thrift stores. Here's a hint too. If you have towns that are a little bit more, uh, upper to middle, middle, upper class or upper class, they also have thrift stores and they put a lot of good stuff in there. Uh, so, you know, maybe you don't want to go necessarily in your town, but you want to hit the towns around you also. So um, number 11 is long-term planning. Uh, this is, I can't stress this enough. You want to have achievable goals in your preparedness. So start with some small stuff, have some larger stuff. Maybe the small stuff's water. Larger thing is the freeze dryer. And then encourage, you know, everybody within your association to set goals and gradually improve on their goals. Same thing within your own family. You know, accountability partners are huge too with this. Hey, did you get your water stored this week? Hey, did you rotate through your water? You know, keep a log of what you're doing. And then um, I got a few more here. Uh that's for long-term stuff. Uh, emergency savings, I would definitely have cash, silver, what have you on hand, gold backs, that sort of thing. Uh, and that's just, you know, in case you can't get to your ATM and the money doesn't come out, you have some money to go get gas or you have some money to go get food or you have some silver to barter with somebody, something along those lines. And this is like, you know, really, really bad stuff. But, you know, if the system does go down, you can't get access to your cash. Well, then what are you going to do? So have a few hundred dollars, you know, maybe a thousand dollars on hand, but don't have it all in one place. Split it up. Keep it in a safe, preferably. Um, number 13 is resources and sharing. Um, this is also really important with a community. If you have an association or even just like I said before, within your neighbors is sharing of tools, you know, um, working together to enhance preparedness. Like I was putting out a list for Liberty House. Like, listen, I've got, you know, a tile saw. I've got two tabletop saws. I've got a chop saw. I've got this. I've got a leaf blower, whatever it is. I've got an extra cha electric chainsaw that somebody can use if they just need to do some pruning around their house. So these are all different things. You could put a list together within your association and say, hey, here's stuff. Kind of think of it like a library, but a library of tools where members can check stuff out and return it. You know, maybe they don't need a chainsaw all the time, but you know, Maybe they're preparing to clean out some brush around their house because, you know, if a tree falls or they have these small trees that can cause problems or what have you. The point is that you're putting this stuff together to collaborate with your members or even your neighbors like, hey, man, uh, I see you got a backhoe. I've got this wood splitter. Do you mind 
clearing out some stuff with the backhoe and you can take my wood splitter for the afternoon or, or, or weekend. There's all those different things you can do to collectively work together. And, you know, like I said, we're seeing this on the large scale with Texas right now, these 26 uh, other states. We need to start doing this again. It all starts at the local level. And this is where we need to start working with ourselves. So um, we're coming at almost 40 minutes here. Got to kind of get going. Um, so that's resource sharing. That's number 13. Uh, 14 is review and update. You want to review your plans. You want to update your supplies. You want to rotate stuff through. Think of like a grocery store, oldest to the front, newest to the back, rotate through your pantry. Don't just buy it and use it like, you know, and I'm notorious for this. Like, I'm not good at this. Like I've got stuff I canned a year ago that I really need to eat the soup at this point. Like I made this fall harvest soup. It's been down there for about a year and a half. I need to start eating it and then recan some more and keep replenishing that stock. Um, I do plan in the future having uh, these ladies come on talking about canning. Uh, it's actually one of the Angelos from uh, uh, the PMA Manifesto. Uh, they've got this really good canning stuff going out of New Jersey. So I'm going to get them on hopefully soon. But again, whatever your stock is, rotating it through. Now, this even goes for flour, pasta, stuff like that. If you have a lot of uh, all-purpose flour or bread flour, I like to keep mine in the freezer. That way there there's any bugs or anything in it because there's normally bugs that keeps them dormant or kills them, stuff like that. You can actually vacuum pack that stuff in uh, mason jars. I've done that. I've put flour into big mason jars, vacuum packed it. Same thing with rice, sugar, that sort of thing. So, uh, But again, just update, review, go through your supplies. If you have a preparedness manual or anything like that or uh, folders in your uh, cars for meeting points or insurance information or credit card information. I'm sure all that stuff's available. Use a cipher for that too. So, you know, if somebody breaks in your car, they can't just get your information. And number 15 at 41 minutes that we're coming in here at. This is kind of a long episode today. So thank you to all of you who have been listening so far. Uh, motivation and support is huge. Like there was a point in time where I didn't want to prepare anymore. And I was like, oh, I don't want to do this. Or, you know, I bought this stuff and, you know, the zombie apocalypse hasn't happened yet and I haven't been able to use it. So, uh, or just life gets involved and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, so I'm looking forward to retiring uh, from my law enforcement job in, you know, about a hundred days or so, because it's going to free up a lot of time for me here around the homestead and really to dive into my prepping. But Keep in mind when you're thinking of all this stuff, you know, we have a family of seven. I've worked two to three jobs at one point at one time. Right now I do real estate. I have my law enforcement job. I'm back in school to pursue my law degree. And I try to do this podcast Monday through Friday to bring the information that I have to share with you and to build this community that is Rebel Alliance or East Coast PMA. So having that motivation, having that accountability partner is very important when it comes to preparedness because if you don't have that, just like anything else in the business world, if you don't have that accountability, if you don't have somebody checking in on you, things can fall through the cracks, things you can miss. You know, like right now, my freeze dryer, we've been in our house for four months. My freeze dryer is still at my mother-in-law's in her basement. Like I need to get that out of there, but I don't think about it till my head hits the pillow and I wake up at like two o'clock in the morning. I'm like, crap, the freeze dryer is still over. So like my garage still has a bunch of crap in it that I need to get out, move a safe and some other things before I can bring it over here because I need to make room for it. But now it's like, okay, I need to get it over here. I need to start freeze drying again um, because the kids love the Skittles and the uh, marshmallows that come out of it. So, uh, and along with some other things. So that being said, um, you know, take small steps, take affordable steps, work within your budget. There's no budget too small to start prepping, you know, especially nowadays, you can work a side hustle, you can do other things to bring in money to help prepare for that, you know, to, to build your preparedness. And if you want to know more about different side hustles, there's some on the East Coast PMA, reach out to me, shoot me an email, I'll be more than happy to share some of the side hustles that I use that are kind of autopilot, you know, you got to put some work into them, you got to get get them going. But once they start going, you start getting that residual income every month, which is great, because now I have residual income without tenants and toilets, because trust me, I've had real estate before and rentals, and I've had people burn them to the ground. It's not the most fun thing in the world. So there's ways of going about it. But you know, Use your head, talk to other people, you know, make small decisions, say, hey, this week we're going to do water. Next week we're going to start, you know, inventorying our pantry and figure out what we need and we're going to build a food list and go from there and just take those small steps, work within your bounds or within your means and don't feel you need to get the biggest, best thing and buy a year's worth supply of storable food from Patriots or whoever it is that's hawking their stuff. So 
That being said, I see that there are no comments. I know it's a really off time to do a podcast today, but I wanted to get this in before I run to the gym because I'm really trying to work back on my health now that my eyes fairly healed, my shoulders healed, and I have to get to the transfer station before it closes to get rid of this mattress. So thank you all for watching. I appreciate you spending your time with me here, uh, whether it was uh, in the live stream for a little bit or watching the replay. Again, uh, like, share, share. Tell others about this podcast. Let me know in the comments things you want me to talk about or reference or questions about associations, either in East Coast PMA. Drop them there. Drop them in the PMA Manifesto group, Telegram group. Let me know because I want to make sure I'm getting you the information that you want to know instead of me coming up with these topics and stuff. But until tomorrow, I'm probably going to do another one in the afternoon because I missed a couple days this week. I will see you on the next episode. Peace and have a great weekend uprisings all over the country and maybe there will be people need to start taking to the